Squeaky belts. You're gonna want to stick around. Intro. All right, sorry for the delay, guys. This video is kind of overdue. Life's kind of hectic right now, but everything's fine. So today we're going to be doing some belt pulley tensioner replacement on the C5 Z06. I've done many belt and pulley swaps before on an LS motor, never on a C5 Corvette. I know in my GTO, it was really simple. People have said that it's a little more challenging with the way the hood is and the uh, more cramped space in there. But you know what? I'm confident we can do all of this from the top. I believe we just need a wrench, open end set, and a 15 millimeter socket, and we can get this job squared away. I got both my belts, both my pulleys, and both of my tensioners from Rock Auto for like 120 bucks, not too bad. Doing this process, all six of these components is pretty much replacing every belt system on your, your C5Z minus your harmonic balancer. That itself is not kind of its own unique animal. When they fail, they fail. There's no real way of knowing when it's going to. You'll get a little bit of a death wobble and then it fails. And to replace that, you do have to replace the entire steering rack, which I'm not gonna do right now. But in the future, if it does fail, that gives me an excuse to replace my entire steering, so. And I'll put a diagram here, and it's one of the engine bay of the diagram itself. Pretty simple setup, pretty simple system. Uh, the AC belt is a little more tricky to get to on the LS platform. 96.3% of the time, when you have a belt squeak on the LS platform, I don't know why, it is your accessory belt I have found. So, and again, if you have a belt squeak, typically you can get away with just replacing your belts, but I'm just gonna do all of it for two reasons. A, to make a fun little video for you guys, and secondly, the car is, you know, older and 90,000 miles on it, so why not? I'll show you what I got real quick. Oh, I got a magnet. All right, here's one pulley, All right, a second pulley. I believe this is my main drive pulley, the smaller one with the accessory, but when we swap, it'll do a one for one, so no confusion. Uh, two belts, your bigger one and wider one's your main serpentine. Your little one is for your AC, or your accessory belt. Your accessory belt only has your AC on it. Another way to troubleshoot this too is if you just take off your accessory belt and drive it, the noise goes away, you know it's your AC belt. And then these should be the tensioners. All right, tension number one. I believe this is the AC air conditioner, the accessory tensioner, I think. And yeah, this is your main drive tensioner. I do have the the faintest squeak when it's a little warmer on cold stars, especially when it's humid. And that's why I'm doing all these. All right, so I'm actually kind of excited to see if we can get all this done from the top. I'll take you guys over there, strap you on my head. Or maybe just hold it. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully this won't take too long. I know my GTO, my LS2, I did this whole job in like 45 minutes. Hopefully it's just as easy. So let's see. All right. After assessing this, you know, I think we can get all these from up, up top here, from up above here. So this is your main belt uh, tensioner right there. Just a 50 millimeter. You're going to want to do it clockwise to undo it, just like so. When you do that, you can release your belt. Take it off. So what we're gonna do is go to, and I got I need two hands to do this, but I'm gonna release this, take this belt off, and then I'm going to take off this tensioner and the pulley on the other side, which I will show you in a second. And that'll have our main drive situation good to go. And then we will take off all of our accessory drive stuff, which is right down there. It's kind of hidden, but it's not too bad to get to, honestly. Let's get this main drive belt off with the uh, tensioner and the other pulley. All right, so under the tension, belt came right off. It is kind of tight, but it's not nearly as bad as I suspected. I mean, I worked on a submarine for many years in very, very tight spots. So this kind of seems like child's play, you know what I mean? But, and the belt's not in back condition by any means. But I'm gonna go and replace it. Why not? So I'm gonna go get that tensioner off. And then on the other side, there's a pulley right there if you can see it it's right underneath your power steering reservoir boom and they're both a 15 millimeter let's get those bad boys off so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and a fun little trick for leverage if you can have a breaker bar i do but this is just showing you guys if you don't simply take your uh your wrench and you can use a bigger wrench for leverage you put on, on there like that and you can break it like that if you need some more leverage all right, this guy came off easy enough. Just two little bolts, 15s right there. 
Same size, I'm gonna go ahead and swap in the new one real quick and then we'll do the pulley on the other side. All right, easy day. So, so far I'm like six minutes into this job, not too bad. Uh, you wanna go ahead and torque these down to TAF, tight as fuck, and do a quick visual inspection, make sure everything's square and it looks good, nothing's bent or caught or, or binded or anything. All right, let's get that pulley out over there. All right, moving right along here. It's gonna it take some hand and finger gymnastics, but you can get it with a open end 15 millimeter. I have tiny wrists and hands, so it helps a lot. Taking this power steering reservoir off right here, this guy, would probably be really easy. Nonetheless, eh, five minutes of work, this little guy came right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the new one in, and it's just gonna screw right back in and torque it down. All right, well, ran into a snag. I knew that was going way too smoothly. Uh, putting on the main drive idler pulley, which is this guy right here. The pulley, you know, the, the bearing is pretty bad. You can hear it, it needs some love, it needs to be replaced, no big deal. Uh, I got these little shim deals here, like, they're like little dust covers that go in front of the bearing, but it still spins just fine, good to go. However, the replacement one I got from Rock Auto is too deep and it rubs right here and when you put it on and clamp it on with the back little dust shield guy uh it pretty much makes it so the bearing doesn't move i looked up online make sure i wasn't crazy and sure enough this is a thing there's actually a service bulletin now to make sure you only get the ac delco replacement main drive idler pulley which i just overnighted and because this is a video, I can snap my fingers and it'll be tomorrow. All right, just like that. So it's pretty cool. It comes in a genuine OE box with a little uh, void seal tamper thing. It's pretty nice. Uh, highly recommend this method. And if you're gonna do this, I, I think you have to go this route. And it's gonna be, I think this one's like $30 versus the other one which was, I mean, the quality's fine. It just doesn't work. It was like 20 bucks or something. So on this route, you do gotta get the OE AC Delco. No big deal. And some of you might be wondering why I didn't just use a washer or something inside of there, which I could. I mean, I probably could've got a, you know, a decent sized washer, threw it in there, but he wouldn't have got that nice seal around it and wouldn't have got gunked up much quicker inside of it. And I didn't want to do this job again in like a year. So yeah, that's why I went with the OE replacement. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in. Super simple, it's one bolt. And then we will press on to the accessory pulley tensioner situation. All right, working back over here. My GoPro sucks. I filmed replacing both the tensioner and the pulley, which is right here. It was really easy for the top pulley. You just need a 15 uh, below <clears throat> to release the tension with a 15 but the actual one bolt underneath is a 13, of course, for whatever reason. But these were very easy to get to. You shouldn't have any issues at all. Pretty quick and dirty. The stock little dust boot deal that goes on top of the, um, the pulley, the bolt, that worked just fine. Unlike the one on the main drive, no issue there. So now I'm just gonna route the AC belt. And then once you get it in place, I recommend around the harmonic balancer first. It'll make it easier when you get in place over here to loosen tension on the tensioner and slide it over your AC compressor. I think this is going to be the most challenging part of this, but again, I think we can do this all from the top. So I'm going to go knock this out. If I run into any issues, I will address them and explain some things you can do differently to make your process a little easier. All right, took some kind of awkward finger gymnastics, but nonetheless, you can replace the AC belt from the top. A little trick I did, I took my 15, right? I put it on the tensioner down there, which is the bottom one of the two. And once I put it on, I moved it, you know, I put the tension off. I took this larger one and it fit. Once it was up, it fit where I put my light actually in between it and my radiator and it held it in place so I could just slip the belt right on. But I think I could get it just holding it with my right hand. It wasn't too terrible. It wasn't the easiest thing, but nonetheless, yes, you can change your accessory belt from the top without removing anything else besides the main belt. But um, yeah, wasn't terrible, wasn't fun. 
but it's done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the uh, main serpentine belt on and we're done, guys. I'm not gonna start it up because it's like two in the morning. Obviously, if there's any issues the next day, I won't post this. So if it's up, you know it's went smoothly, if that makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and get that main serpentine belt on. All right, serpentine belt going on. So it looks like my serpentine belt, someone did it recently. It's still kind of got its shape from when it was in box, but it's a good rule of thumb to measure both side by side. Make sure you have the right one so you're not driving yourself crazy putting in a new one. Um, belts I got were, were gates, not gator back, but gates. They're fine belts. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this in using the proper diagram you can find all over the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this bad boy in right now. All right, and just like that, biggity boom, not too bad. It's kind of cramped. Uh, yeah, the GTO is easier, but this is all doable without stressing. Um, belt routing is kind of weird, but there's plenty of diagrams. And I'm sure I'll, I'll include a link in the description as well if you're confused, but they're easy to find. And before you start it, make sure all your belts are square. All the grooves are good to go. On your tensioner, harmonic balancer, alternator grooves, power steering grooves. It's up around your little uh, idler pulley right there, which we just replaced. Everything looks good and square. So we're good to go ahead and start this guy up. Well, I hope you guys appreciated this quick and dirty little belt pulley tensioner video. Don't let this job scare you. The only hiccup I had was the stupid uh, idler pulley not fitting, but now you know the correct way to do it. Hopefully your situation will be a lot easier. So, cool, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up. And let me see what else is going on. Coming down the pipeline for this guy. I got a few more interior goodies coming. I am gonna do silver coilover sooner than later. Willwood brake kit, which looks just like the C, uh, C6, Z06 brakes coming as well. Um, I will be running 18s up front to match the rear square setup. So all that jazz. Another Corvette news coming probably by Friday. So, alright guys, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys next time. Mark out.